It's the Global PC Games Market Report 2024. All right, this uh, came out last week, but I missed it until now. And it's pretty significant. This is uh, the big VG Insights report focusing on, obviously, the PC games market and really on Steam because Steam is the biggest part of the PC games market, but also because it's the easiest to get data for if we're being honest. Now, most of this report does focus on larger games. It is an over, you know, overview. The big games are making up a sizable majority of the money made. We'll see how much money a little later on in this presentation. But I want to mine this thing for some insights we might be able to get on indie games in 2024. So the question we're kind of looking at is, will 2024 be a good year for indie? And there's... When you ask if it's going to be a good year, I think there are really two questions wrapped up in that. One, will smaller games make more money slash a larger proportion of the money? In other words, will it be a better year for the market? And two, will it be a good year for the average developer? Now, question one, the answer, and I'm going to make my case for this as we go through this, is almost certainly yes. This is definitely going to be a good year overall. Question two is a little more nuanced, uh, but we will get into that as we go along. So, start off by looking at uh, the money Steam A. Very good year for Steam overall, 2023. Uh, as you can see, big jump up. Now, we'll look at this a little bit later. It is anticipated to stagnate and drop a little bit. We'll get into why that is, but continuing on... Uh, here are our top games for 2023 by grouped by units and by revenue. A lot of overlap between the two of them. Now, again, this is just for Steam. This isn't covering the overall video game market. I'm told that the number one uh, video game for 2023 overall was Hogwarts Legacy, unfortunately. And number two was, and this shouldn't shock you at all, a Call of Duty game. A lot of this probably won't come as too much of a surprise to you. We've got BG3, Hogwarts Legacy at the top of both lists. Uh, we've got Lethal Company, a uh, late year indie sensation. Uh, Starfield's on here, of course. And a couple less expected, Resident Evil 4 did very well. Sons of the Forest, which is maybe the most ignored game of 2023. Not saying that as a fan, it's horror and it's survival, and I don't like either one. But it's kind of amazing to me how much that game was ignored by the uh, video game press. But enough of that, let's move on. So, genres, there's been a bit of a shift towards RPGs. Uh, obviously, there have been some... Uh, very strong RPGs, top two games were RPGs, and they're, it's probably going to remain that way since a lot of the most anticipated games right now are also RPGs or action RPGs or hybrids of some type. Uh, also, a lot, uh, big decline in the casual games. Uh, it does appear that a lot of Steam's growth during the pandemic was sort of these this more casual audience and a lot of them have kind of dropped out so that's not too surprising uh this is the number of games released you may notice it's extremely high uh, it's actually higher than my estimate i think the number i went with in state of indie was twelve thousand five hundred. that's uh, a stricter definition of what qualifies as a game because believe it or not there's not it, it's kind of hard to track how many games are on steam because of what qualifies as a game this is a looser definition either way the point is it's a lot uh there's almost certainly going to be even more uh in 2024 because uh, all of these games that started development during 2020 and 2021 they're all coming out now so there's going to be a big rush over the next couple of years and then hopefully it will quiet down after that uh, obviously this is not ideal for any developers who are already dealing with a lot of competition. Now, so 14,000 new games. The most interesting piece from this page is that very few of them were free to play, uh, fewer than 3%. I want you to take that and file that away in your head. Fewer than 3% of the new releases in 2023 were free to play. It will become important a little bit later. 
So this is our overall forecast, and we're just going to kind of skip through this real quick because it's not directly relevant to what we're talking about. Again, video game industry is projected to decline. Actually, it declined in 2023 as well. Uh, what had happened is during 2020 and 2021, it grew uh, prodigiously, but that was mostly the industry kind of pulling consumers forward. Basically, they were borrowing video game consumers from the future. So the growth that would have happened last year and this year happened in those two years instead. But one other note uh, over here on the side, they are noting that one reason they are anticipating a decline is that there aren't going to be, there aren't as many major releases being uh, predicted, at least not major AAA releases. Um, 2023, there were a ton, obviously a lot of really big deal games. Uh, 2025 is likely to be the year of GTA 6, so no one's going to care about anything else, which means 2024 is actually kind of a good year. That is one point in favor of developers having a good time, the smaller developers. You're at the very least not being overshadowed by AAA games, at least not new AAA games, although there's another concern we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, this is again more about uh, the way the platforms are changing. One thing I'd like to note is that the average price of games has actually been going up. Uh, I bring this up, I did mention this in State of Indie, and uh, several of my interview subjects kind of wanted to argue with me about this point. They said, oh, well, the games aren't actually getting more expensive. They are. They absolutely are getting more expensive. Now, one catch to that is you are seeing uh, deeper sales from people trying to stay competitive. Uh, you're seeing a lot more uh, bundles that are being marked and even more. You're seeing a lot more games showing up on subscription services. And with all of that, you could argue that uh, holistically, the price actually has dropped by a lot. And that is a question I will be asking. I am already writing my questions for the next SOI, which I will start sending out in February. I do start working on this really early. But price is one of those kind of evergreen issues, especially for smaller developers. Really, if you're not trying to make money, it's not such a big deal, although arguably you could price a game so low people find it suspicious. But again, that's going to be an SOI thing. Look forward to that in November, by the way. I hope you stick around. So now we're going to get into uh, one of the more amusing parts, and that's the idea of market concentration. So something that's really happened in the digital distribution age, and not just to video games, to kind of everything, is that all these markets have spread out, but also grown inward. As more people have entered the market, uh, the biggest stars have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And a lot of that is down to just competition. When there's you know millions of options, people don't pick what's the best thing for them. They pick what they know. And here's what that looks like in the video game space. This year, 61% of the PC games, and at least the Steam income, was from 10 games. 10 games generated more than three-fifths of the income, which is a recent record. Uh, this is a more kind of detailed graph. You'll see that the top 100 games, that's 100 games released in 2023, made more than nine-tenths of the income. So when people talk about like how well, oh, good, look at this one indie game, it made you know millions and millions of dollars, that is an experience shared by such a small portion of the people who do this. And that is important to remember. Most people are not doing anywhere close to this well, and I wish people would remember that. So let's look forward. These are our big releases for this year. We've already talked about this. There are no surprises. So let's talk about anticipated games. Now, this is another point in favor of 2024 being a big indie year. Most of these are small developers. Uh, I should point out, by the way, this is not wishlisted games. This is follows. I won't get into uh, the nitty gritty over those. Uh, there is kind of a debate about which one is more significant. Uh, between wishlist and follows, this is follows. That's all you need to know. Uh, number one most followed game right now is Enshrouded, which is the next game from the people who did Portal Knights, a uh, big deal 2017 game. Unrecord is a game I had actually not heard of before looking at this slideshow. Uh, it is a VR only game. Kind of interesting to see a VR game that high in the list, but all right. Again, point out most of these are 
from small developers. Most of these are what we would call indies at the very biggest double A's. Uh, the other thing, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but I promise I'll keep it short. I promise I'll keep it to less than a minute. In fact, I'm timing myself right now. Uh, several of these games are Korean. Uh, Dark and Darker's Korean, First Descendant's Korean. And what's interesting is you are starting to see mainland Asia is already the largest part of the video game consumption. It's where most of uh, uh, the largest proportion of video gamers live. And they're starting to make inroads into development. And it's amazing how many people dismiss them. I've spent several, you know, last year, several years, last year, trying very hard to pitch an article about the video game scene in mainland Asia because it is really uncovered. That's where I've spent, you know, six years living in that area. I do spend most of my time outside of the U.S. It's something I think is very important. It's going to become more important because... Uh, Chinese and Korean developers are are really staking out more and more of the market, but nobody seems to want to hear about this, so it's probably going to end up a video essay right here. That's a minute. Let's move on. This is an interesting bit, and I actually read an article about this. We need to talk about markdowns on sales because games are getting cut more and more and more, but what's interesting is that's happening more with AAA games. So this was... A big piece of news out of the Black Friday sale on um, Steam was that a lot of that year's AAA games, not older ones, but AAA games in 2023, were getting really deep markdowns. You can see here that EA Sports FC 24, which again was one of the top 10 selling games of the year on Steam, was marked down 50%. Uh, on all platforms, not just on Steam, across the board. Now, up until now, I thought 50% for a AAA game that recent was unheard of. But it's actually becoming pretty standard. Like, Hogwarts Legacy was marked down 40%. A lot of other games were marked down 30%, which is just really, really deep discount. Now, there's a lot of discussion about, again, there are now alternative ways of getting games... Obviously, like Starfield was on the Xbox Game Pass from day one, which cut into its sales. But uh, an issue there is that they're having to mark these games down more and more to remain competitive and to remain visible. And that's mostly talking about the big dogs. It's talking about the AAA games, major releases, um, less than 12 months old. But I think this could have some tack-on effects to indie games. Obviously, there's a history of smaller games getting marked down to 50% or more relatively soon after their launch and it's easy to say there you could even argue this could be a good sign obviously a lot of people will throw indie games into their cart to like empty out a steam uh a, a card a gift card so you have 15 dollars left in credit uh when you're cashing out and so you buy like one or two or three or four heavily discounted smaller games a lot of people do this what i'm worried is that it may make people more likely to just buy a, an additional AAA game if they're marked down that much. And that could exert more downwards pressure on these smaller games, which is, again, going to be an issue going forward. So that's not great, but uh, I have a feeling that the next slide is going to make you happy because it's about microtransactions and there's some interesting news. So overall... Um, microtransactions are still a big part of video games. They appeared in more of them, at least on Steam, on PC, where you kind of expect to see them. But for the largest games, the ones that sold over a million units, there was a steep decline. They're actually at their lowest level since 2018. Now, remember what I told you to file away, is that in 2023, there weren't that many free-to-play games being launched. So it seems like there were fewer games that were trying to make their money primarily off of post-sale monetization. Now, obviously, this doesn't cover the whole market. Um, it doesn't even cover the whole PC market, remember. This is just Steam. There is, a, a, there is life outside of Steam, believe it or not. But it is an interesting sign because you definitely see free-to-play games being more concentrated on PC. So the fact that there's this drop, I mean, it's not necessarily a pattern. I'm not going to run a victory lap. I know there's a lot of people on YouTube who would do that. But one data point does not a pattern make. We'll see what they look like in 2024. 
uh, when the next year's report comes out. But, you know, it's okay to celebrate. It's okay to be happy that, proportionally speaking, somewhat less of the market is dependent on post-sale transactions. I certainly appreciate that. So what exactly does this mean for indie games in 2024? Well, as I said, overall, it's going to be a strong year. You're going to see, uh, over the next 12 months, tons of crappy video essays, uh, singing the praises of the indie market without naming any individual games, because promoting individual games is hard. But I think for individual developers, it's going to be tough. Honestly... The market right now is confusing me. I keep very close tabs on this. I'm checking the like, top selling, top played games every week so I can get subjects for State of Indie reviews, interviews, excuse me. And honestly, the games that are that have done really well, the games that owned the first week of 2024 did not make me super happy. But, you know, that still leaves us a long time left. By the way... Uh, I do want to mention, if there are any developers out there, I again, I have already started working on next year's article and video. So uh, part of it for this year is in addition to the longer surveys I'm sending out, I'm also doing a shorter one. It's uh, mostly multiple choice kind of thing, three to five minutes. I'll leave a link to it in the description. If you are or have released a game in 2024, you're eligible. I take a pretty broad definition as to what uh, classifies as a release. DLC, something leaving early access, all fine. But for now, I think we're done. So I will see all of you on another day.